Welcome, this is John Brooker with the School of the White Crane. Today we'll be discussing the world's fastest growing religion. What is the world's fastest growing religion? Christian evangelism in Asia, Africa, and the Americans? Nope. Islam through its aggressive ag aggrandizement? Nope. It is a rise of socialism which has seen many permutations over the past 200 years. Socialism would cure all, save all. It has been the driving force in ideology, politics, and economics. Man's reason and studies show became the new scripture of the anointed. The university has become the secular temple. It is a belief that man is primarily a politic and political and economical being, and that government control of politics and economics can solve social problems. The key to proper governance lies in properly educating the governed, according to this elite. Man entirely of his own reason and organization can solve any social problem through political or economical means. It abandons the idea that man is primarily a spiritual being. Man, with all his pride and faults, becomes the new standard of what is good and what is evil. Reason and the scientific studies became the new corpus of the enlightened. These anointed individuals rejected the wisdom and traditional mores of thousands of years of human experience. Their god is Prometheus, and like him, they are rebels against the gods. It is they who are the heroes of the brave new world that bring the celestial fire to earth. They find themselves at odds against the normal traditions of society. They disdain ordinary people and the bourgeoisie lifestyle. They are progressive, forward-looking. They are enlightened. Once they are in charge, everything will go well. The old religions are their anathema, myths that stand in the way of progress. Man is the new God and God is cast out. God is the greatest outdated delusion. The new clergy are the ruling class, politicians, journalists, educators, and purveyors of popular media. They are the enlightened who work for the common man. Their worldview is what has driven this development. It is the predominant view that government is responsible for most, if not all, aspects of life, including providing jobs, education, health, welfare, housing, food, charity, retirement, transportation, communication, and yes, the environment. Even the mores of sexuality are entirely to be decided according to their good sense. This view has been the most powerful historical trend over the last two centuries, not only in America, but worldwide. There is no problem too great that a new law and a new bureaucracy cannot solve. We simply make a new alphabet soup for whatever problem arises and create a new agency, the AAC, or the AFMC, or the FAFSA, or whatever. We simply must figure out the root causes, and then we will create the new man through proper education, proper laws governing behavior, and re-educating any recalcitrant persons to the politically correct point of view. In divine principle, we call this the Cain-type view of life, which holds a dominant position in society. People whom God encourages through religion and the traditional view of life, we call the able type view point, which is subordinate in society. The School of the White Crane recommends Dr. Soul's book, The Vision of the Anointed, self-congratulation as a basis for social policy. Dr. Sowell presents a devastating critique of the mindset behind the failed social policies of the past century. He sees what has happened during that time not as a series of isolated mistakes, but as a logical consequence 
of a tainted vision whose defects have led to crises in education, crime, and family dynamics, and to other social pathologies. In this book, he describes how elites, the anointed, have replaced facts and rational thinking with rhet rhetorical assertions, thereby altering the course of our social policy. Thomas Sowell uses the term anointed to refer to liberals, benighted or tragic for conservatives, and the term vision represents their philosophy. So the vision of the anointed is the way liberals view the world. A succinct summary of the tragic vision was given by historians Will and Ariel Durant. Out of every hundred new ideas, 99 or more will probably be inferior to the traditional responses which they propose to replace. No one man, however brilliant or well-informed, can come in one lifetime to such fullness of understanding as to safely judge and dismiss the customs or institutions of his society. For those are the wisdom of generations after centuries of experiment in the laboratory of history. This is a quote from page 112 of the book. For the anointed, traditions are likely to be seen as the dead hand of the past, relics of a less enlightened age, and not as the distilled experience of millions who faced similar human vicissitudes before. Another quote from page 118. A fundamental fault of well-meaning peoples that they forget to look at the results of their good intentions. Because of their so intent on gaining ever more political power, ever more dominance in society that uh, what more, most people believe to be common sense and prudence to see if it works is not in their worldview. The presumed irrationality of the public is a pattern running through many, if not most or all, of the great crusades of the anointed in the 20th century regardless of the subject matter of the crusade or the field in which it rises, whether the issue has been overpopulation, Keynesian economics, criminal justice, or natural resource exhaustion, a key assumption has been that the public is so irrational that the superior wisdom of the anointed must be imposed by force, if necessary, in order to avert disaster. The no the anointed do not simply happen to have a disdain for the public. Such disdain is an integral part of their vision, for the central feature of that vision is preemption of the decisions of others. Page 123 through 124. To assume your opponents or common folk are not enthused about your great crusade does not mean they are, are stupid, mean-spirited, or greedy. Probably they have the good sense that your ideas are not going to work. <coughs> Although Adam Smith regarded the intentions of businessmen as selfish and antisocial, he saw the systematic consequence of their competition as being far more beneficial to society than well-intentioned government regulation. A quote from page 126. Adam Smith recognized what worked and therefore relegated good intentions as a mute point. Those with a vision of the anointed often advocate the settlement of international differences through diplomacy and negotiation rather than by force as if diplomacy and negotiation were not dependent on a surrounding set of incentives of which the credible threat of military force is crucial. Page 130. In the real world, evil, selfish people are often in power. They don't agree to give up their power, and all manner of persuasion is unlikely to move them. That's a good example as Hitler considered Neville Cha Chamberlain a little rat. 
When the anointed say that there is a crisis, this means that something must be done, and it must be done simply because the anointed wanted it done. The word becomes one of many substitutes for evidence or logic. A crisis must never go to waste. <clears throat> but to those with the vision of the anointed to say that a particular plan or policy is contrary to human nature as we know it is only to say that human nature must be changed. Thus the vocabulary of the anointed is replete with such terms as sensitizing, enlightening, or re-educating other people. Page 190. So we know all about the re-education camps, of course. But one thing, the four... <coughs> This is one reason why liberals have always had such a fascination with the use of force against people who, with whom they disagree. And they often exalt people who use a great deal of force, such as Fidel Castro or Che Guevara. Another way of verbally masking elite preemption of other people's decision is to use the word ask, as in, we are just asking everyone to pay their fair share. But of course, governments do not ask. They tell. The Internal Revenue Service does not ask for contributions. It takes. Many of the world, words and phrases used in the media and among academics suggest that things simply happen to people rather than being caused by their own choices and behavior. Thus, there is said to be an epidemic of teenage pregnancy or of drug usage, as if these things were like the flu that people catch just by being in the wrong place at the wrong time. The vision of the anointed is one in which ills such as poverty, irresponsible sex, and crime derive primarily from society rather than the individual choices and behavior. To believe in personal responsibility would be dis to destroy the special role of the anointed, whose vision casts them in the role of rescuers of people, treated unfairly by society, page 203. But society doesn't actually treat people. People are actually treated one-on-one -on -one by actual individuals. If people were just material beings, then money and material would be enough to eradicate all evils. But obviously, this is not so. To say that wealth in America is unfairly distributed in America, as Ronald Dworkin does, is grossly misleading when most wealth in the United States is not distributed at all. People create it, earn it save it and spend it. Judicial activism is a mechanism through which the liberal vision can be imposed on a public which does not support it without having to go through elected officials who would not dare to vote for many of the features of that vision. So precisely because no one would vote for such things, it is easier to force it upon the ignorant masses by judicial fiat. The charge is often made against the intelligentsia and other members of the anointed that their theories and policies based on them lack common sense. They lack common sense. But the very commonness of common sense makes it unlikely to have any appeal to the anointed. They're not common. How can they be wiser and nobler than any, everyone else while agreeing with everybody else? In the anointed, we find a whole class of supposedly thinking people who do remarkable little thinking about substance and a great deal of verbal expression. In other words, this group is very articulate. In order that this relatively small group of people can believe themselves wiser and nobler than, com than the common herd, we have adopted policies which impose heavy costs on the millions of other human beings, not only in taxes, but also in lost jobs, social disintegration, and a loss of personal safety. Seldom have so few cost so much to so many. Page 260. This is why 
the principal examines the hidden, hidden psychology, the motives behind Cain's murder of his brother Abel. What Dr. Soul is describing is fallen nature, the sinful nature of human beings which anointed are oblivious to in themselves and their side. This is, video is a production of the schoolthewhitecrane.com. My name is John Brooker. You can contact me at schoolthewhitecrane.com at gmail.com. Also, please check our homepage. If you live in the Portland Beaverton area, every month we have a get-together. We'd love to meet you in person as well. You can also see this video on True Family Values TV on YouTube. Thanks so much.